Alright, so this is going to be a video about simplifying radicals. And basically what I did for this video is I broke it down into the three major rules that you need to, in order to simplify radicals. So this first one is combining like terms. So to kind of explain this one, I used two examples of things that you're probably already familiar with with combining like terms. This x plus x would make 2x. Okay, 3x squared plus 2x squared would be 5x squared. I'm just combining the like terms of x and x and x squared and x squared to form this. Now, if I ever have something that's like the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x, the same rules apply for combining like terms. So the answer for this would be, would be 1 square root of x plus 2 square root of x. Your answer should be 3 times the square root of x. Okay, so that is combining like terms. Um, for simplifying radicals. The next one, it says no perfect square factors can be in the radicand. The radicand is whatever you're taking the square root of. So in this case, it would be 3, here it would be 8, here it would be 50. Okay, these are the radicands for all of these. So this states that there's no perfect square factors allowed. So the easiest way to figure out if there's a perfect square factor in there is to factor it completely. Now when I say no perfect squares, it's not actually including 1, so I'm not going to include 1 when I factor this. Well, 3 is prime. So this first one is square root of 3. 3 is prime, so it doesn't actually break down any further into any other factors. So to do the prime factorization of this, it would just be the square root of 3 as it is. There's no perfect squares. This would already be simplified, so you don't really need to do anything for the square root of 3. For 8, however, it's a little bit different, because the 8, the square root of 8, will break down into the square root of 2 times the square root of 4. Now, what you might see is, oh, the square root of 4, well, 4 is a perfect square. So what you could do here is you can just simply turn this into a 2, and your answer would be 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, And usually the whole number goes in front, and whatever the radical is, it goes second, so that's kind of why I flipped the order here. But it would be the square root of 2 times 2, and then just flip the order over here. Okay, another way you can do that is just do the complete prime factorization of this. So you would, could have the square root of 2 times, now I'm going to break down this 4 into the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. So you end up having the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, like so. Now based on the properties of radicals, or square roots in this case, when you multiply two square roots together, they end up canceling and just being whatever that radicand is. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. So what you can do is combine these two right here and you'll get 2 times the square root of 2 because this one drops down over here and you end up getting the same answer as if you just did the perfect square version or the whole prime factorization version. The answer is always the same. You can't really trick math with this so the answer is always the same. This last one, 2 times the square root of 50, I made it a little bit more difficult, a little bit more involved. I have this whole number in front just to kind of uh, keep us on check here. So what we're going to do to solve this one is I'm still going to factor it out so I'm going to do 2 times now I'm going to do the prime factorization of 50, which is going to be 2 times the square times, which is going to be the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Because the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 50. So what I'm going to do here, I notice there's two square roots of 5 here. These would combine and just form a regular 5. So you'd have a 2 times the square root of 2 times 5. Now here we can combine the 5 and the 2 to make 10, so it's 5 times 2. Remember, order doesn't matter for multiplication, so I'm going to move the 5 over here. 5 times 2 is 10, times the square root 2 for your answer for this one. Now it's really important whenever you have problems like these is to throw them in your calculator and get the decimal approximation and check your work with it. So you can plug this first one in right here in your calculator, square root of 8, hit enter, you have the answer as a, as a decimal. And then you can do the same thing with this one, get another decimal approximation, and make sure that they're the same. If they're not the same, then you know you did something wrong, and you probably need to check your work or redo the problem completely. Okay, same with this one. If I did 2 times the square root of 50 in my calculator, you'll get a decimal approximation. Do the same thing with this right here to make sure they match. Next, we're going to have our next rule where it says no radicals in the denominator. So in this case, I have three examples where there is a radical in the denominator. So for this first one, we have 1 over the square root of 3, which means we have a radical in the denominator. So to get rid of that radical in the denominator, I'm going to show you a little trick. So what we're going to do here for this fraction, we're just going to multiply it by 1. But we're going to multiply it by a fancy kind of 1. And this fancy kind of 1 is basically going to match whatever is in that denominator. So I'm going to do root 3 over root 3. 
This is technically equal to 1, so you're not actually changing the value of this. We're just using this to simplify. So you can kind of think about it as simplifying fractions. If you do 2 over 4, that's equal to 1 over 2 because you're just dividing the top and the bottom by 2. So as long as you divide or multiply by the same number for the top and the bottom, you're just multiplying by 1. You're not changing this number. You're just simplifying it according to the way we want it simplified. Okay, for multiplying fractions, what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply across. So 1 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 3. Divided by, and we'll keep multiplying across again, square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. This would be considered simplified because there are no radicals in the denominator, and there's no perfect square factors in this radicand of 3. Because again, 3 is prime, so we don't need to worry about this rule right here. This next one, we have a radical divided by a radical. Okay, the same rules actually apply for this one the same as they do for this one. So it might look a little bit more scary, but it really isn't. You just need to multiply it by our fancy 1, which in this case is going to be the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Okay, you multiply across, so square root of 5 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 10. Divide this by, well, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. Then you have your answer. Now you need to check, is there any perfect squares, factors, in this radicand right here of, of the square root of 10? In this case, there isn't, so we don't need to worry about simplifying this any further. Um, it's as good as it is. All right, so for this third example, we have 2 divided by the quantity 3 minus the square root of 2. Now, whenever you have a radicand on the bottom and it's part of a binomial, there is a different kind of a trick that you're going to need to get rid of this or to simplify this so that there's no radical in the denominator. Okay, to do this, you're going to need to use what's called a conjugate. Okay, what a conjugate is, in this case, a conjugate of 3 minus the square root of 2, its conjugate would just be 3 plus the square root of 2. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by this conjugate. Now, the reason why we want to do that is because conjugates allow this, this bottom term to simplify where it will not have a radical anymore. Now, why is that? Well, I'll show you. So, first thing we're going to do is multiply the numerator and the denominator oops, by the conjugate of the denominator here. Okay, this top part is just going to be, we're multiplying across 2 times 3 plus the square root of 2. Divided by, okay, for this right here, we're going to multiply across. Now, this might take a little bit longer to do, so I'm going to do it over here. Okay, we're going to multiply this whole first factor by this first term in this binomial. Similar to how we did it before, we're just distributing. And now you end up with 3 times 3 minus square root of 2, plus, now we're doing this whole term, times this square root of 2, times 3 minus the square root of 2. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 3 times the square root of 2, plus 2, square root of 2 times 3 is 3 times the square root of 2, I just flipped the order, minus, because it's root 2 times negative root 2, which would be 2. Okay, these middle terms cancel, because it's negative 3 times the square root of 2 plus 3 times the square root of 2. So those would cancel, and you're left with 9 minus 2, which is simply 7. Okay, so this times this simplifies to 7. So that makes our life a lot easier rather than having to deal with a radical in the denominator. It cancels it right out with the conjugate, and you end up with 7. Here we can simplify the top if we want, distribute this 2 out, and you end up with 6 plus 2 times the square root of 2 divided by 7. Check all your other rules, make sure there's no perfect squares in the radical, in the radicand, which there isn't here, and everything else is simplified, so this would be our answer right here. So those are the three basic rules of simplifying radicals. What I'm going to do in the next video is give you a problem that you need to use all three of these rules on to solve. Okay, I'm going to give you the problem, you can pause the video, and then I'm going to actually work it out, and you can check your work with how I work it out. So if you have any questions about this, let me know.